Hello guys, my name is Miguel, welcome to Rush the Wash. On today's video we're going to see how to paint your skeletons using nostalgia paint jobs from the 90s as our source of inspiration and use the techniques that new painters and veterans will find easy to apply and fast to get results with. But first, a word for my sponsor for Dungeonvania videos, the series that shows you how to paint your undead miniatures. Hello, my name is Simon Belmond, I am the real deal. Not this weeble bullshit over here. And I want to talk to you about Wall Chicken. Have you ever been tired of defeating the monsters, seeing them driven before you, and hear the lamentation of death? Well, the solution is having a good slice of Wall Chicken. Dracula's brand Wall Chicken. Trust no other. Delicious. Ow! In undead terms, skeletons are the main body of the armies of the unliving. They are the soldiers that form the ranks of infantry for the armies of the dead and, although a little bit more difficult to reanimate than the recently deceased, they are reliable units that necromancers and vampires alike like to include in their forces. They are not skilled warriors by any means, but their availability, numbers and the unnerving effect fighting these long dead warriors creates in those facing them makes skeletons a good choice to include in undead armies. Painting bone is a rather straightforward business. Experienced painters have done it more than once, as there are always details that require painting some kind of bone or another. You could say all miniature collectors have a few skeletons in the closet. Each one of us usually has their own approach to doing it, and it could be boiled down to two main techniques. Either building up to an off-white or white color from a dark base, such as black or brown, either washing on top of a light color with a brownish ink or contrast paint. For this particular tutorial, I want to use two articles from the Middlehammer era that show how to paint a skeleton. There are more guides out there, but these two in particular I like best. The first one is this article by Mike McVeigh that can be found in this heavy metal guide as well as in White Dwarf 142 and the Warhammer Fantasy Battles 4th edition rulebook. The second one is this absolutely fantastic and very crazy article from White Dwarf 211 where the heavy metal team painted a whole undead army for the Circle of Blood campaign in a couple of weeks. I was already in love with the undead before this White Dwarf, but seeing the striking combination of the red, black and white army sealed my fate as a forever fan. This is absolute top-notch middle hammer nerd castle. What I learned from these articles is a few key points that I want to share with you now. So let's get to it. On this first article, McVeigh recommended mixing yellow and brown ink plus a little water and using these as the first wash for the skeletons. The result is a khaki looking base. This is the first step, so if you don't like the color, don't despair yet, there is some more work to be done. We need to enhance the recesses as they are not dark enough. By mixing the brown with a little flow improver, we will get a very runny wash that will go straight into those recesses and darken where we want it to darken. Regarding the inks, both Liquitex and Daily Rowney brands work perfectly for this as they resemble the types of inks McVeigh was using back then. After both dry, we will follow them with a dry brush of a shafty bone and then another one of white scar. You do not have to use Citadel colors as any equivalent colors from other ranges will do just fine. The main issue you might encounter is that after both dry brushes you will get a chalky looking mini. If that is the case, getting the brown ink mixed with flow improver in a 1 to 4 or a 1 to 5 ratio and giving a quick wash with it will fix it. The main issue with this approach of mixing inks is that we are moving back and forth until we find the right consistency and you really have to play it by ear. It takes practice, practice takes time, and that is something that we want to avoid as we need our minis painted fast. And in order to avoid this, there is a solution. Enter the current washes and contrast colors. These have two main advantages compared with the inks. The first one is that they are already mixed with the color we want, and the second one is that they have a nice consistency that covers on a more homogeneous way. If we feel like using a darker color, we can make it a runnier wash by adding water or flow improver. If we like how dark it is, we can add some medium. 
The issue with using darker contrast paints is finding the right mixture of the paint and whatever we are using to get it to be less intense. For speed, using Seraphine Sepia or a Skeleton Horde are the best options here. If you would like to paint your weapons like I did with the zombies in the previous video of the series, link in the description, this is the moment where you can start the process by basically slopping a whole lot of paint on the mini. In fact, either way, do not worry much about staining any other areas when painting the base color, as you won't need to worry about cleaning up any mistakes. Now it is the time to do highlights. A consistent base color is very important, but to get to the middle hammer look from the circle of blood army, then we really need to look into cleaning up our skellies a little. Here we have three options. Dry brushing, layering, and a mix approach. Dry brushing works fine, but be aware that if you aren't careful, you might end up having to wash again, and then dry brush again, entering a vicious circle of never-ending shading and highlighting. This is not optimal for saving time. Now the second option is the highlight by layer 1. For this one, you really need to work on your paint consistency and your brush technique. These things are difficult to teach on any video and they require practice. Knowing how liquid your paint has to be to get nice soft highlights and how to do layering, feathering or other more advanced techniques defeats the purpose of this method which is saving time. The skeletons will look cleaner but unless you really want to do this the gains are marginal and at a distance when we play they won't make much of a difference. I advise against this if you want to get lots of minis on the table by next Saturday's game night. So what is the trick here? Well, combining the best of both worlds. This is the third approach and it takes a little bit of dry brushing and some layering highlights. From beginning to end, this is how I would paint my skeletons if I had to do it all over again. Start from a white undercoat. Do a seraphine sepia or a skeleton horde wash. Give your skeletons a light Ushapti bone dry brush. Follow that with an extremely light white scar dry brush, focusing on the top of the skull, the shoulder blades, the hands, the elbows, the knees, the feet, and the ribs. Give a focus wash with a mixture of brown ink and fluid improver in the joints, eye sockets, between the ribs and in all those small crevices that need some extra shading after the dry brush. Now with a slightly watered down white scar paint, highlight the eyes and nose and the chin. I recommend going a little extra here and adding highlights too to the following. The sternum, the rib cage, but only in the middle, shoulder blades, the fingers and the knees and elbows. Now to get to a nice quality level we need to focus on the teeth. Start by painting them with pure brown ink or black paint. Here is when it gets a little bit more difficult, but it is totally worth it. It does make a difference painting the teeth one by one. You don't even need to follow the sculpt. Just put two parallel horizontal lines of dots there with pure white. Since the face is a focal point on any miniature and our skeletons do not have eyes, the teeth and the highlights we have put on the skull will make up for those. Thank me later. And once you're done with the bones, it is time to really have fun. The weapons, armor and clothing of the miniature offer a change of pace that is very rewarding to do. The main pointers I can give you here is to make sure you stick to the theme you want to have in your army. For me, as I want my skeletons to be using Hero Quest and Warhammer Quest, I want them to look suitable for underground complexes, hence the name of the series Dungeonvania. That is why my bases always look like flagstones. For the weapons and armor, I began painting the metals with lead belcher and once that was dry, I used a red earth ink from Daylor Rowney, watered it down and painted it to get some spots here and there. I mostly focus on the chainmail, the inside of the blades and the rivets and followed with a dry brush of iron breakers which is a tad lighter than lead belcher. This simple approach makes the metal look cheap and rusty but still functional. Wherever I felt like it, I added some extra depth with some sepia wash, agrax or even nolan oil. For the wooden spear shaft and the bows, I wanted them to look black without painting them with a black paint. They had previously been washed with sepia and now I just added a layer of grief charger grey followed by another one of levian and blue. This is something I also did for the leather boots in the pirate skeleton. By the way, if you know where this mini is from, please share it with me in the comments below because I've never seen this mini before and I'm like 90% sure it is in Games Workshop. 
The other leather parts of the miniatures, I just painted them with browns and skin tones because they work quite well for that. This combo of Griff Charger Grey and Lebanon Blue creates a dark blue that reads like black in the minis and looks great without being too dark nor plain boring. The blue hue makes it nice as it contrasts well against the pale but rather yellowish bones and the red rust of the weapons. This is because by adding the color to the palette we have all three basic colors which pleases my middle hammer mind. For the shields I started by painting the metal bridges with Iron Breaker and then washing them with Seraph and Sepia. For the front I decided to use two colors, red and blue. Now for this dark blue I used Leviathan blue yet again and added some Grief Charger Grey to it on a second coat after the dark blue was dry. The red on the other hand was painted first with Troll Slayer orange and then Agron red. I like this combination because it creates this red that is very similar to the orangey's red of the 90s. The back of the shields, which some people will totally not paint because they won't appear on the final photos, I painted with a wood grain pattern by drawing lines with brown ink over the sepia base. Even though people might paint just for taking photos, I do it for playing with the minis and therefore my skeletons will have to be viewable 360 degrees no matter where my players might sit at the table. Now the more exciting Bruh. part of the whole process was painting the Reaper symbols with a simple non-metallic metal based on, you guessed again, Grave Charger and some Leviathan Blue. The skull symbols were just sepia with white highlights with the same approach as with the skeleton bones. The final details will be painting the clothes in green for which I used Grief Charger Grey and another green. I also added some small freehand to the skeleton leader with a very typical pattern of crossbones. I decided to use green because I like the color but you can use whatever you like of course. And because I use my miniatures for gaming I sealed them off with two coats of varnish, one of shine and a second one of dull coat. With the simple approach that I've shown you, skeletons are very easy to paint and still retain the looks and feel of the 90s miniatures. In fact, most of the beauty is in the details. The time is spent on those really pays off. All the miniatures I paint here end up being used in my games and having some extra bodies for Warhammer Quest or Hero Quest is gonna make those undead center quests and adventures more atmospheric. And then it is just time to roll dice and get to playing some games because after all, what are we painting for? Click on that subscribe button, watch this over here. My name is Miguel, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Un beso, adios.